Hello everyone. Today we are going to see some concepts of fundamentals of mechanism from Theory of Machines 1 by Mrs. Prachi Kare, Department of Mechanical Engineering, VPKBIT Baramati. Machine and Mechanism A machine is an assemblage of a links or mechanisms which are used to transmit required motion as well as forces both. A machine transmits not only the motion but also energy to do useful work. For example, IC engine, lathe, clocks, turbines, etc. Mechanism is an assemblage or linkage which are used to transmit required motion. It transmits and modifies motion or forces only. The examples are four bar mechanism, slider crank mechanism, etc. Link A resistant body or a group of resistant bodies with rigid connections preventing their relative movements is known as link. So, number of links constitutes a mechanism. Number of mechanisms gives us a machine. Types of links. Binary link, ternary link and quaternary link. A binary link is a link connected to other two links is called a binary link. A link connected to other three link is called as a ternary link. And a link connected to other four link is called as a quaternary link. So, these are the types of links. Now we will see one example to identify binary, ternary and quaternary links in the following mechanism. So this is a mechanism given. So first we have to give numbers to the various links in a mechanism. So link number 1 is fixed. This is link number 2, link number 3, link number 4, link number 5, link number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So there are 11 number of links in the mechanism. So now we will see which are binary, ternary and quaternary of this. Binary links are link number 6. So see link number 6 is connected to link number 2 and link number 3. So link 6 is connected to two other links. So it is called as a binary link. Same as link number 7 which is connected to link number 3 and link number 2. Same as link number 8, link number 9, link number 10 and link number 11. So all these links that is link number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. These links are connected to two other links. So these are called as a binary link. Then ternary link. So see link number 3. So this is a link which is connected to three links. That is link number 3 is connected to link number 6, link number 7 and link number 4. So it is called as a ternary link. A link which is connected to three other links is called as a ternary link. Like link number 5 is also a ternary link which is connected to link number 1, link number 11 and link number 10. So here you can see it is connected to link number 9 and 11 but at the same joint. So it gives 3 locations to get connected to the other links. That's why this is called as a ternary link. Then it is quaternary link. So link number 2 and link number 4 are quaternary links. So we can see link number 2 can connect it to other 4 links at 4 locations. Like it is connected over here with link number 1, link number 11. Here it is connected with link number 7 and 8 and here it is connected with link number 6. So there are 4 locations which with which the link can get connected to other links. So that's why this is link number 2 is called as a quaternary link. Similarly link number 4 is also a quaternary link as it connected to 4 other links. So thus we have seen how to classify binary, ternary and quaternary links. Now we will see types of joints. Binary joint. When two links are joined at the same connection then the joint is called as a binary joint. So for binary joint there should be interaction of or intersection of two links. Then is a ternary joint. When three elements are joined at the same connection then the joint is called as a ternary joint. One ternary joint is equivalent to two binary joints. Means when we will count the binary joints, if there is a ternary joint, then we will count for one ternary joint, we will count it as two binary joints. And then quaternary joint. When four links or elements are joined at the same connection, then the joint is called as a quaternary joint. One quaternary joint is equivalent to three binary joints. So when we have to calculate number of equivalent binary joints, if there is one quaternary joint, we will count this as equivalent to three binary joints. Now we will see one example to see 
how many number of binary, ternary and quaternary joints are there. So just take this example. Here number of links is given and we have to count the number of joint. So binary joint. So we can see at point D link number 5 and 6 are connected. So D is a binary joint. Now we can see ternary joint. So take example of A point A. At point A link number 1 link number 11 and link number 2 are connected. So A is a ternary joint. Likewise C. At point C link number 3, link number 7 and link number 5 are connected. So C is also a ternary joint. A joint at which 3 links are coming together is called as a ternary joint. Now we can see for E at point E link number 1, link number 11 and link number 4 are connected. So E is also ternary joint. F at point F, link number 7, link number 8 and link number 10 is connected. So, this F point is also a ternary joint. Now, quaternary joint. So, point B, link number 3, link number 8, link number 9 and link number 2 are connected. So, B is a quaternary joint. Four links are joined at link together at point B. So, it is called as a quaternary joint. At point G, link number 9, 10, 4 and 11 are connected. So, point G is a quaternary joint. So, like this we can classify the joints into binary, ternary and quaternary depending upon how many links are connected at that point. Now, we have to see equivalent binary joints. Now, as we have seen earlier, one ternary joint is equivalent to two binary joints. So, how to calculate the equivalent binary joint? So, we can say by actual binary joints plus 2 times of ternary joint plus 3 times of quaternary joint will give us equivalent binary joint. See, we can say that at point C, we will take link number 3 fixed. So, link number 3 connected to link number 5, one joint. Link number 3 connected to link number 7, other joint. So, at ternary joint, there are 2 binary joints. If we take an example of quaternary joint, so G is a quaternary joint. So, at G, we will keep one link fixed. So, keep link 11 fixed. So, 11 connected to 9, 11 connected to 10 and 11 connected to 4. So, at the quaternary joint, there are equivalent binary joint equal to 3. So, we will substitute in this formula to get equivalent number of binary joint. So, 1 binary joint plus 2 into 4 ternary joints plus 2 into 3 quaternary joints. So, this is equal to 1 plus 8 plus 6 that is equal to total number of equivalent binary joints that is equal to 15. Now we will see what is a kinematic pair. A kinematic pair is defined as joint of two links having relative motion between them. So if two links are moving with respect to each other they are forming a kinematic pair. So the types of kinematic pairs are according to relative motion between the links that is turning pair, rolling pair, then third one is a sliding pair, cylindrical pair and screw pair. So according to the relative motion between the links, the classification is lower pair that is surface contact and higher pair that is point of line contact. And the classification according to mechanical arrangement between the link is first is self-closed pair and second is post-closed pair. So here we can see that depending upon the relative motion, if a link is having turning motion with respect to each other, we will call it as a turning pair. If two links are having rolling motion with respect to each other, we will call it as a rolling pair. If there is a slider and there is a sliding motion with respect to another link, it forms a sliding pair. Same is the case for cylindrical and screw pair. Then, according to the relative motion between the link, if the two links are having surface contact with each other, it is called as a lower pair. So, all types of turning, rolling, sliding and cylindrical pairs, they give us lower pair. And if when two links are coming together with point or line contact, it gives us higher pair. So, all types of camps and follower gives us higher pair. And according to the mechanical arrangement, it gives us self-close pair and force close pair. Now, we are seeing what are the types of constraint motion. So, basically a constraint motion is a motion in a specific direction. 
or specified degree of freedom. So the types of constraint motion are completely constrained motion. The relative motion between two links can take place only in a definite direction and can be predicted easily. For example, motion of a rectangular shaft in a rectangular hole or motion of a circular shaft in a circular hole we call as at the both ends. Now in completely constrained motion, the motion is possible only in a one specific direction and it can be predicted. So if we take example of rectangular shaft in a rectangular hole, the shaft will only reciprocate. Because of its geometry, it will not rotate. So there is only one motion possible that is the reciprocatory motion. If we take an example of circular shaft in a circular hole with collars, then because of the collar, the reciprocatory motion is restricted and there is only circular motion. So this is called as a completely constrained motion that is motion possible only in one specific direction. Then second type is incompletely constrained motion. In incompletely constrained motion, motion is possible in more than one direction. When motion between links can take place in more than one direction, the motion is called incompletely constrained motion. For example, motion of circular shaft without collar in a circular hole. So in this case, as there is no any collar, there are two motions possible. Reciprocatory motion as well as rotary motion. So that's why this is an incompletely constrained motion. And the third type is successfully constrained motion. When relative motion between element of link is not completely constrained by itself, but by other means that is or as a successfully constrained motion. For example, rotating shaft in a footstep bearing with the axial load. Because of the load acting vertically downward, it will prevent axial motion of the shaft, allowing the force and only rotational motion. So here, a force, external force is required to make the motion constrained. Now we will see what is the degree of freedom. So this is the formula F is equal to 3 into N minus 1 minus 2 P1 minus 1 P2. So this is a mathematical expression. But degree of freedom will give us the direction in which motion is possible. In this formula, F is the degree of freedom, N is the total number of links in a mechanism, P1 is the number of kinematic pair having only one degree of freedom. So in P1, we will count all lower pairs. And P2 is the number of kinematic pair having two degree of freedom. In this, we will count all higher pair. So degree of freedom need to be calculated to analyze the mechanism in which direction the motion is possible. If f is equal to 0, it is called as structure. Means degree of freedom is equal to 0 means no any motion is possible. So this kind of mechanism or this kind of linkage is called as a structure. So where there is a no any motion. If f is equal to 1, it is called a mechanism. And if f is less than 1, so if we get a value of f, minus 1, minus 2 likewise, it is called as a superstructure. So that is, it means it is over constrained. We will see one example to find out the degree of freedom for the given linkage. So this is the given mechanism or the linkage. So as usual, first we will give numbers to the links which are given already. So link number 1 to be given to the fixed link already. And then we have to give numbers to the links. So after giving numbers, we will count total number of binary links, ternary links and quaternary links. This we have seen it earlier how to differentiate between binary, ternary and quaternary. Then total number of links is equal to 11. So kinematic pairs with one degree of freedom that is having motion in one direction that is P1 is equal to 15. Now we will see how to count this value of 15. So see link number 1 connected to link number 2 gives one kinematic pair. Then link number 2 connected to 11 gives second kinematic pair. 2 connected to 6 gives third kinematic pair. Now here there is a ternary joint. Link number 2, 7 and 8 are connected with each other. So we have seen if there is a ternary joint then we will count as a 2 binary joint. So we will count it as a 2 kinematic pairs at this point. Then here 
at link number 6 and 3 connected, one kinematic pair. Then link number 3 connected to 7, the next kinematic pair. Likewise, link number 3 connected to 4, next kinematic pair. 4 connected to 8, next kinematic pair. Then 4 connected to 9, next one. Then 4 connected to 10. Then 10 connected to 5. 5 connected to 1. And 5 connected to 9. And 5 connected to 11. So here also there are 2 binary joints. So 2 kinematic pairs. So like this we will count the total number of kinematic pairs giving P1 equal to 15. Now kinematic pairs with 2 degree of freedom that is P2 is equal to 0. Because there is a no any pair having higher pair. So we will substitute P2 equal to 0. Now the formula to find out degree of freedom is f equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 p1 minus 1 p2. So substitute in this formula for n equal to 11, p1 equal to 15 and p2 equal to 0 and solve we will get f is equal to 0. So we can say degree of freedom for this linkage is 0. So this is called as a structure. So like this we can find out the degree of freedom for the given linkage. We will take one, another example to find degree of freedom for the given linkage. Now, this linkage is given, so we have to give numbers to the links. So, link number 1, we will give always fixed link. Then, link number 2, link number 3, link number 4, link number 5, link number 6, link number 7, link number 8 and link number 9. So, these are the total number of links. See? This is a link number 7 up to this point and this is link number 8 and the slider is link number 9. So likewise we have to count the number of links. So total number of links equal to 9. Now we have to see kinematic pairs. So we can count the kinematic pairs like 1, 2 forming one kinematic pair, 2, 3 giving second kinematic pair, 3, 4 is next kinematic pair, 4, 5 is next kinematic pair. Then slider is reciprocating with respect to fixed link. So there is a kinematic pair phi u1 which needs to be counted. Then 3, 6 connected here. So 3, 6 is one kinematic pair. Again link number 6 is pivoted at this point. So 6, 1 is a one kinematic pair for this link. Then 6, 7 is one kinematic pair. 7, 8 is another kinematic pair. 8, 9. And then again slider is sliding with respect to fixed point. So 9, 1. So the total number of kinematic pair with degree of freedom equal to 1 is equal to P1 is equal to 11. Now kinematic pair with degree of freedom equal to 2 that is P2 is equal to 0 because there are no any higher pairs in the given linkage. Now F is equal to 3 into N minus 1 minus 2p1 minus 1p2. So now substitute in this formula n equal to 9 2 into 2 into p1 is 11 minus p2 is 0 and after solving this we will get f is equal to 2. So degree of freedom for this linkage is equal to 2. So like this we have seen how to find out the degree of freedom for the mechanism. So up till now we have seen Number, how a mechanism and machine is differentiated, what are the different types of links, what are the different types of joints, what are the different types of kinematic pair, what is the meaning of degree of freedom, how to calculate number of joints, that is number of binary, ternary and quaternary joint, how to calculate number of binary, ternary and quaternary link and how to find out the degree of freedom for the given linkage. Thank you.